Good morning, folks. This is Ben Caton with Clarity Farms Grazing 365 coming to you from Central Arkansas. And this morning I wanted to produce a video and discuss something that I think is probably the single most important variable to a cow-calf operation. And I, to do so, I was going to highlight, you know, give you a tale of two different cows. So uh, late last year, late last summer anyway, I purchased uh, from Oklahoma 40 additional Corriente cows. And these cows have had the exact same access to, uh, they've run together. So the same hay over the winter, same amount of grass last summer, last fall, and so far this spring. So this cow right here, this number three, if you look at her, she's in great body condition. She's already slicked off, which is certainly something we look for. An animal slicks off, means they're healthy. Huh? She's kind of getting away from me here. Um, that's her calf, I believe, right in front of her. She's got a calf on her. I think that one's hers. Um, but if you look at her, she's got a lot of gut on her and not a lot of leg. Sorry about the camera work. Uh, not a lot of leg, but a lot of gut. There we go. Um, so my favorite author, and I think probably in my estimation, the best cattleman in the world is Johann Zeitzman. And something that he preaches is something is what he calls practical fertility. Too often academics want to measure the, the fertility and the heritability of fertility in optimal environments. So when they measure a cow or bull's fertility, they do so in environments that are controlled, where feed and the quality of that feed is basically unlimited or ideal. And the reality is, uh, there's, there's not a cow-calf operation out there that has perfect and ideal conditions. And so what he preaches is practical fertility. And the number one determinant of practical fertility is body condition. If a cow's body condition drops too low, she is not going to breed back. And these cows that I'm looking at this morning, I'm gonna show you a couple here. This, this girl right here, she's in great condition. Again, she's slicked off. She's got a lot of gut, which means she can put away a lot of forage. If you wanna finish cattle on grass, you gotta have a lot of gut. Relative to their size, to their, their frame size, cows to have good grass genetics have got to have a lot of gut. That gut is a fermentation vat. And that's what they're using to convert grass into calories. So you've got to have a large rumen capacity relative to their body size. And she is exactly what we're looking for. Not a lot of leg, good gut. Now in our South Pole herd, we have even uh, you know, an even more extreme version of this. Uh, right now they just look like hippos. Really short, stubby legs, big guts. And that's one of the things we really breed for and cull for. This girl has enough room and capacity that even with the cap on her, she's maintaining good body condition and she's only going to continue to put on weight this spring and summer. And when we turn our bulls in in July, there is no reason to think that she will not cycle and breed back. Now let me show you one of her herd mates and we'll discuss her. So here's our herd mate. Now this cow has had access to the exact same feed, same grass, same hay as her herd mate. She's not wormy and she does have a calf on her. But look at that. She's built more like a thoroughbred than a cow. Uh, now she, you know, it was a bundle deal. I you know, about 40 cows and uh, sight unseen and I got what I got. But look at the size of her gut. And look at how much leg she's got. 
So frame wise, she's actually, I would say one frame size larger than the other cow, but she has significantly less room and capacity, gut capacity. What are the chances, no matter how good the forage is this spring and summer on our farm, that she's going to be able to nurse her calf and maintain a body condition that allows her to cycle and breed back? I would say very little. I, I will be surprised. Now, I'll say this about Corrientes. If any, <laughs> if, if any cow can maintain that type of body condition and breed back, it's probably a Coriente. But this is just not what you're looking for in a grass-based system. So let's say she had a steer or a, a bull calf and we steered them and we wanted to finish that steer on grass. How is that steer calf going to get enough grass in a gut like that to finish on grass. I don't think there's any way. In a cow-calf operation, folks, this is not what you're looking for. So uh, my suspicion is this cow is going to have, she's not going to have quite the happy ending that the previous cow is going to have. The other cow, all indications are she's probably going to live a long, healthy life on this farm and my suspicion is this cow here uh, is probably headed to freezer camp or will be cold uh, later this summer and as thin as she is she'll probably end up purely as ground beef very lean ground beef but she has given us a calf and i'm a believer in giving all the animals an opportunity and she has calf for us and and she may cycle back and breed back again who knows uh, but she's got all the odds stacked against her and that other cow has all of the odds in her favor. So practical fertility, the number one variable there is body condition. And the most important variable when it comes to maintaining body condition is a large gut relative to their frame size. If they have twice the frame size, as another cow, they need to have twice the rumen capacity just to tread water and maintain body condition with the smaller animal. This is not a good grass genetic animal. If you haven't read Johann Zeitzman or listened to any, any of his videos on YouTube, I would highly encourage it. He is all about low input, systems and throwing most of academia out the window because cow-calf operations don't operate in a laboratory with perfect conditions. We operate uh, in, in what in, in, here, in what we call North America on pasture in South Africa and Zimbabwe, what they refer to as felt. So to all of you subscribers, I want to thank you. If you're not a subscriber, please do so. Click that subscribe button, please. Uh, it would go a long way to helping us. While you're at it, you might want to click the bell. That'll notify you when we come out with a new video. We've gotten a lot of comments and suggestions on our last several videos. Uh, we appreciate those, especially the ones, uh, you know, especially the suggestions on things that we can do and improve on our farm and our ranch. Uh, there's a lot of folks out here doing what we're doing, and many of them are doing it better than us. And we want to be lifelong learners here at Clarity Farms. So I want to thank you all again and wish all of you a good day. I'll go ahead and sign off.